So now we can do some other pretty cool stuff. What I'm going to do now to make this next process pretty fast is I'm going to highlight this whole thing again. I'm hitting Shift, End, Down. Now let's give this a name. Let's call it Dice Data. So you see I, I highlighted that whole range and up in this little area this is called our Named Range box. So I'm going to just give this a name range. I'm going to call it Dice Data. And I'm going to press Enter. You have to hit Enter in this case. You can't just click somewhere. And it's going to name that range. Now, if I'm over here and I pull down this little menu here and go to Dice Data, look, it takes me right to that range of values. So what I want to do now is do some quick summary statistics on this data and my tools. I have a data analysis menu item. If you don't have that, you need to go into your um, oops, tools. It has another item called add-ins here. So if you don't see the data analysis guy on the menu, you need to go into add-ins and select the analysis tool pack. Put a checkbox there, say OK, and it will automatically install it for you. And that's just a standard part of Excel. It's with Excel, but it's not normally installed unless you ask for it because a lot of people don't use it. You guys are power users now, so you're going to use it. So what I'm going to do is pull up my data. I'm sorry, my tools and my data analysis menu. And I am going to do something just real quick and easy, descriptive statistics. It's going to give me things like my average, my high, and my low. And if you remember, we had our data range was called Dice Data. I could use this box here, and it would let me highlight that whole column of data. That would be pretty easy as well. Or I could have just typed it in, which would have been C10 through what it's probably like C1010 or something like, something like that. And what it's going to do here is create a new, let's do an output range, and we'll put it right here. I'll show you how to use that feature. Click here. And this is going to tell me, I'm telling it where I want it to put the results of this, these statistics. So I click here, and I'm going to go ahead and have, them, have it stick them right there. And when I click on this box here, it's going to take me back to that dialog. I want to get summary statistics, and well, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and get the confidence intervals as well, 95% confidence interval. And I'm going to say, OK. Now look, it's going to stick it right there. So our mean, which is how I act when I give you guys tests, very, very mean, is, no, actually, this is the average, is 7.116. Standard deviation is 0.07593341. Hopefully you guys remember that from your statistics and math classes. And we have our, I'm sorry, that was a standard error. And our standard deviation is down here, sample variance. Kurtosis is really just a measure of how, how pointy the normal distribution would be. Skewness is whether it skews off to the left or right. This should be zero um, in this case, but it's pretty close to zero. And our range. If you remember, our minimum of a roll of two dice is two. Max is 12, so our range is 10. You just subtract one from the other. And if you added them all up, we have 7,000, which kind of makes sense. Our average was 7.118. We have 1,000, so our sum is going to be 7,118. Duh. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool, but we still want to know what is our most common role. Well, it should seem kind of obvious here that from our mode, which uh, if you remember what mode is, that's the most common value is a 7. But how much more common is 7 than something like, say, 6 and 8? Well, let's do what's called a histogram. And first, a histogram kind of needs, needs to know how to bunch up the data. And they, it uses what are called bins. So I'm going to set up some bins here. And I want it to, to show me how many values I have that are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And 12. Those are all our possible values for our, our two die roll. And we're going to go back into that same crazy menu, data analysis. And now we're going to use our good old histogram, which is just a, a kind of a crazy chart that shows you the 
numbers of each of the different outcomes that we have. So our input range, if you remember, was dice data. And our bin range, I don't know what those are, so I'm just going to highlight those guys like that and hit enter. And I don't have any labels. And we'll do an output range here again, and we'll just put these guys maybe over here. And let's go ahead and show our cumulative percentage on there. And let's go ahead and do a chart also. Now don't ask me why, but it's going to tell me an invalid reference when I do this. I don't know why it does that. I have not been able to figure that out. If anybody knows, let me know. I'd love to know. I'm going to click OK. It's running. Oh, you know, it didn't. It didn't give me that. that uh, maybe I had done something in a different spreadsheet that was kind of messed up. But what we have now, it used our bins. If you remember, we had them here. So it says we have 24 twos, 51 threes, 74 on up. And you see we have 169 sevens. So we get, in this case, when we did 1,000 runs, we got a 7, 57.3% of the time. I'm sorry, this is our cumulative. So as we're adding them up, we have gotten a 7 or less 57% of the time. So that's charting this pink line right here. But you can take a look at, if we zoom in here, let's make that a 200. And if we zoom in on our chart, you're going to see why the casino likes the 7. Let's change these, uh, this category axis. We'll make these numbers a little bit smaller so we can see them. Hopefully they'll all show up now. Ah, they still don't. Format the axis again. Let's make that like a 5. And now maybe we'll be able to see. There we go. Now we can see 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. And these are the values that are in each of our bins, each of our bin buckets. So you can see our bin for 7 is here, our bin for 9, and so forth. So what we can see here is we've done a quick histogram. Now typically you're going to want to do a histogram that includes a range of the value so that the value that you're looking for is in between the bin. And we'll show you how to do that a little bit more as well. So this is just kind of a quick histogram to give you a feeling for what we would do in this case. But we'll get a little fancier as the semester goes by. Okay, well that's it for the dice simulation. Hope everybody has a, a, a pretty good feeling for how to do it and we'll kind of translate this next week into some real kind of more practical business examples and have more fun with it. See you guys later.